I don't know about you, but I've been just enjoying the presence of the Lord. I mean, it has been so strong and so wonderful lately. And uh, I don't know where I'd be without the presence of the Lord. And uh, heat. I don't know where I'd be without heat because uh, it is very cold, let me tell you. I don't know where you're at, but where I'm at, I'm uh, I'm freezing global warming my frozen legs. I mean, my goodness, it is cold. But Valentine's Day is coming up. I think it's what tomorrow. Is that right? Yeah, tomorrow. Um, <laughs> to check, but you know the the reason I had to check is because. It's not really that important to me. And here's the reason why. And don't misconstrue what I'm saying, but it's a good thing that they have a holiday that celebrates the, you know, love that you have for each other as uh, your partner, uh, your wife, a husband, um, meaning as in uh, the opposite sex, of course, you know, one a woman, one man, one man, one woman. But anyway, it's good to be able to celebrate that love and um, to be able to share it. But Valentine's Day doesn't really mean anything to me because I feel like if you don't celebrate that love the rest of the year, then what's the point? Why well, have one day where you just say you love them and be done with it if you treat them like garbage the rest of the year and don't show them that love and that affection and what they need throughout the rest of the year? I mean, one day is just not enough. It's 300, what about the other 364? So, so to me, it's kind of... Yeah, you know, I don't want to say pointless, but it's kind of, uh, I, I don't know, yeah, it, it just doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense in my mind, yeah, and all the gears don't turn, right, but anyway, the point I'm trying to get at is how this relates to our Lord, Christmas, we all know, is a wonderful time of the year, and um, I, I, I like it uh, some. Uh, I, I don't care for the commercialized part of it. and But I do enjoy the family time. Uh, the, the family time is wonderful. Um, unfortunately, that's uh, m most of the time, that's the only time people get to see their family. And the, that's, again, that's a sad thing. But Christmas time is a also a wonderful time but we celebrate people go to church on that day and they celebrate jesus now going along you just gotta follow my train of thought here in matthew 22 and verse 37 it says thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart with all thy soul and with all thy mind matthew 22 and 37 now if we can only do one day a year to love our partner or or spouse, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, and really show them how much they mean to us. And in my mind, the other 364 days, well, they ought to be just the same. And it's the same way with serving Jesus. You can't just go to church on Christmas or go to church here and there on Easter and say it's good enough. You have to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all the time. 365 days a year, 24-7. I mean, you have to really pull out all the works for it. Uh, and it goes on to say in verse 28, this is the first and greatest commandment. I'm having a hard time seeing. I'm sorry. I thought a three was a five, and a five was a three earlier, and I don't know. But anyway, 
the first and greatest commandment, love the Lord thy God. And it didn't give a time limit. It didn't give a time period. It just simply says, love the Lord thy God. And we have an obligation, church, as saints and servants of God to be able to show not only that love towards God, but that love emanating from us that other people may see that love of God. I was trying to think of how to, how to word it. But whenever you see two people that are really in love, you, you can see, you know, you, you, you just see that glow in, that, their, in their eyes and on their face. They're just so happy. And, and um, then they get married and all oh, that goes away. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> He, he, uh, this guy is, <laughs> speaking of which, uh, i tell you just a joke real quick. This guy, uh, they had this mobile, um, pet grooming thing, and, uh, we have a, a Shih Tzu dog, and so she's very fluffy and, you know, needs a lot of trimming all the time, and they come straight to your house, park outside, and, you know, do the do their thing and uh, trim your dog for you, which I think is pretty cool. But the guy asked me, he, he said, here's my card in case you um, want to pass it along to some of your friends. And I said, I don't have a lot of friends, you know, and I was just joking around with him. And he said, well, you're married, you got a, you're, and you got a wife, so that's a friend. And I said, I guess a lot of men have lost uh, their best friend by marrying them. He got correct. He cracked up, but uh, yeah, you know, I joke, but um, I couldn't be happier with my spouse. Uh, uh, she's the uh, the literal greatest thing um, that has happened to me on this on this earth. You know, not as far as spiritually speaking, but on this earth, um, it, it just doesn't get any better because. It, it's like I'm constantly, uh, well, it's simple. She makes me better. She makes me a better person, a better Christian. She just makes me better. And uh, for that, I love her. And uh, I love her every day of the year. And I want to encourage you to love the Lord as if he will. Now, now, don't get me wrong and, and make this twisted, but you need to love the Lord as if, you know, you, with greater passion than you would love a spouse or a child or, or your children, you know, because that passion that you have for the Lord are your those loved ones should not even compare to the passion that you have for serving the Lord. I mean, the Lord comes first and always should come first. And we say that all the time, but we don't really act upon it. We don't really mean it because we put the Lord second and third and fourth and fifth. And we don't even pick up our Bibles half of the time. We don't pray half of the time. We put the Lord on the back shelf. Come on now. Where is the point where we get back to putting God first? 365 days a year, 24 hours a seven, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we serve God. We don't just give them card and flowers one day a week or one day out of a year and then call it good. We actually put our heart and soul into doing it 365 days. I'll tell you the truth, I don't even get my wife anything. I say, she goes to the store all the time, and I tell her, I say, pick up whatever you want, and that's from me. I said, put a lot of thought into it, I did. And uh, just because, you know, I, I don't, it's just not a big deal to me. Um, it's, it, it seems, um, to be 
one of these things where if you only celebrate it once out of the year, then it loses its meaning throughout the rest of the year. The whole rest of the year is just like, uh, well, let me put it this way. It's like having, you know, peaking on February 14th and then, you know, just you can take it easy the rest of the time and then you don't have to do much. You're, you've done peaked out on one day of the year, so you're good, right? You don't have to do anything the rest of the year, except for maybe on a birthday or an anniversary or something. No. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way with your spouse. It doesn't work that way with your, with our God. Love him. I'm going to read it one more time, and then... I'm going to hush up. It says Matthew 22 and 37. But that the... Yeah. I got caught in my mouth. I haven't had enough coffee yet. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. For this, this is the first and greatest great commandment. Hallelujah. Love Him. Praise Him. Give Him honor. Give Him glory. He does something for you. Give Him honor. Give Him glory. He doesn't do anything for you. Give Him honor. Give Him glory. Let me tell you. Everybody has a reason to praise the Lord. You're breathing. That's more than a lot of people could say. And you're breathing on your own. There's some people that's hooked up to vents and tubes and everything and they give anything to be in our spot. And yet those people, some of them, some of them are praising God and thanking them, him just because they have an opportunity to be able to witness and use this situation for him. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves because there are cancer patients out there with so much joy of the Lord in their soul. And here we are so burdened down and bogged down by our own self-pity and self-doubt and all the circumstances and trials of the world. And they know their life is most likely going to come to an end and... They're just happy as can be because they know that serving God is true joy. It's this simple. The number one key to happiness. Happy is a people whose God is the Lord. Serve Him. Love Him. Treat Him this way 24-7 just like you're having church 24-7. You don't have to go to church to be a church. You are the church. You are a vessel and temple of the Holy Ghost. Come on, be the church. I've got to work on it myself. I, I, I'm probably a poor example because sometimes, you know, uh, I show myself and uh, I just, uh, I, I'm fixing to hush. I, I really am. You know, uh, uh We've taken pictures one time, and um, I was trying to stand up, and my the, my wife, she's like, uh, uh, you need to, you know, try to stand up more because you don't have a neck. It, it just goes from shoulder to chin, apparently, and there's no neck in there at all. And so I'm trying to, you know, do this, and she's like, and they're trying to get everything ready for the camera to make sure that we take good pictures. And she's like, no, no, come back over here and do this. And I said, I'm in pain. And I snapped. And, you know, we all have those moments where we just, you know, you get angry and you, you just show yourself for a minute. And it's, you just, uh, then you feel bad about it later and, 
Um, but the thing is, God always forgives us, and I have a wife that's so loving and kind and puts up with me, and I don't know how she does it. Um, I don't know. But make the Lord first in your life. All those shortcomings, all those other things, they don't mean anything. Valentine's Day, it doesn't mean anything if you don't love your spouse the rest of the year. Church. Listen to me. You go to church once a year, twice a year, doesn't mean anything. You get down upon your knees every night. You get down and you start really praying and you start really reading the Bible and you start really seeking the face. That's what makes a difference. Showmanship means absolutely nothing unto God. The heart of man. That's what means the most to the Lord. He said in his word, he said, man looks upon the flesh, but I look upon the heart. God looks upon the heart. He sees the things that other people don't see. He sees the side of you that others can't see. I just wonder what side that is, whether it's a good side, a bad side. I wonder if he see, when he looks at me, whether he sees a pure heart, one that just loves him all of the time. 24-7, or if he sees a heart that's holding back, it's got a little bit of anger, maybe a little bit of hatred, or maybe a little bit of this, maybe a little bit of that, and I'm not saying I do, I'm just saying that we all have these things because we are a unique species called humans, and we tend to get offended easy, especially nowadays, you say anything wrong, do anything wrong, everybody is offended, everybody gets mad, you know what I say about it, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, and you're mad about it, oh well, take it up with the man who wrote the book, it's that simple, you got a problem with uh, um, the way that uh, the preacher preaches or the way that this one says that or something like that and it's biblical take it up with the man the big man I love each and every one of you and I'm sorry I didn't mean to talk this long it's just I am very passionate about this because it, it just it's on my heart right now and I'm not saying don't go out and buy your wife some flowers or, you know, a card. I'm going to go to the dollar store here in a little bit and buy a card and uh, write something down like, thanks for putting up with me. I hope you do it all year long. And uh, sorry I broke your coffee maker. Something of that nature. And um, anyway, I love each and every one of you. God bless you. Um, love the Lord and remember all you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord anytime, any place hang on I'm sorry no I'm not hang on sometimes I just have to be obedient to the spirit of the Lord and I was fixing to end this, and then the Lord dealt with me to go through the sinner's prayer. So that's what I'm going to do. Heavenly Father, I thank you today. I thank you because you're so gracious. You're so worthy, Lord, of love. <laughs> and we're so unworthy to even love you. But you have such mercy upon us. You have such grace upon us that don't deserve it, Lord. See, my life was in shambles when you found me. And 
You've pulled me out of the ditch many times, Lord. When, when my pride or arrogance or anger or whatever it was got in the way, you, you always knew how to take control of it, the situation. And I'm so thankful for that. And you're so loving and forgiving. Lord, I pray today that if there's one person out there that might not know you, Lord, that maybe they know you. Oh, oh my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. They know you, Lord, and they're just turning because they're having such a hard time and they got a. I don't know if it's. Oh, God. Oh God, oh God. They know you, Lord. They know you. Oh God, I pray for them today. I don't know where you're at or what you're doing. Just bow your head and pray with me for them. Maybe they're in a whole other state, a whole other country. I don't know. It doesn't matter because God knows. But bow your heads and pray with me for them. Because God knows who they are. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, touch them today. Move upon them. Minister them to them, Lord. Reach out and move upon their soul, God. Draw them back into the fold, Lord. You said you'd lead the 99 to go search out that one lost lamb. Oh, God, I was that lost lamb, Lord, before. God, I pray for them, whoever it is, Lord, wherever they're at, reach down and touch their soul, God. Help them, Jesus, to come back to the fold. And Lord, I pray that if there's any that may not know you, that they would pray this prayer, that if they can believe with their mouth, or believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that you are the Son of God. You came to earth. You died upon an old rugged cross for my sins and their sins and the sins of that one person that that that's starting to drift away. Then. And we believe that you died and was resurrected on the third day and seated at the right seat, right hand of God, the Father. The Bible says we're saved. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I don't know much about boating. I, I've only... I've been in a canoe before. And that was about it. I, I think, I, I don't know. Maybe ever, maybe more. You can... I'm sorry. Moses is excited over there. He's having a good time. But I don't know much about boating. I, I really don't. Um, but one thing I do know is if you don't tie that boat to the shore to a firm place, it has to be tied good and strong on a post or, or something to be able to keep it from drifting away. If your relationship with the Lord isn't tied to a post, a firm place, a tree planted by the river, then your boat's just going to drift away into rough seas. Maybe that's a sermon for another time. I don't know, but the Lord just gave it to me. I love each and every one of you. We're going to try this again. <laughs> I love each and every one of you. And remember, all you have to do is call upon the name of the Lord anytime, place, and he's right there for you.